Hey there, welcome to the Vico Office user setup video. In this video, we'll cover the three Vico Office system components, their configurations, the hardware and software requirements, and also a series of videos for you to follow along on the installation process. This process should take you up to an hour, depending on the speed of your machine. You'll need administrator rights to make a few system changes before you make the installation and you will be required to restart your machine before you start Vico Office for the first time. It is important that you watch the whole of the video so that you understand the complete installation process. Whilst uh, Vico Office is an extremely simple user interface, it does run on a very high-end enterprise class database engine. And the other uses of that engine are such like tracking missiles for national defense programs, for um, MMOG, Massive Multiplayer Online Gaming, and also stock market trades, tracking of stock market trades. The application connects between the user interface and the project server using TCP IP, and that communication can be slowed down or even blocked by some of your IT company policies. If required during the installation process, please contact our technical support team and they will help you troubleshoot. Good luck, let's get started. Let's check out the Vico system components. The first one is the Vico Office Client, or VOC for short. It's the main user interface that you'll be using. Number two is the Vico Project Server, VPS for short. And this is the database where all of your projects will be stored. The third is the Vico License Manager, VLM for short. And it's only required if you're sharing licenses and it's not installed on a user's machine, but it's installed on a shared server. All components are in a single executable setup file, but make sure when you're going through the user process to check the boxes that you need for your installation. Please ensure that you download the latest setup file from the Vico Downloads page here. Let's move on and take a look at the configurations. There are a variety of deployment options for the three Vico Office components. The user side of the configuration is actually similar for all of these. However, if you're sharing projects or sharing licenses, in order to connect to these, you will need a project or license server IP address and you will just enter that into the My Dashboard page inside of Vico Office in order to connect to those. Configuration A feels just like using Vico Office as a local file based system. It's the configuration that we use for demonstrations. You might use for working offline as an isolated user or if you're evaluating the Vico Office workflow for your company. Configuration A has the Vico project server, the Vico office client, and a single user license on the same machine. And it does not rely on any collaborative project or shared license server. Configuration B introduces more users with their own licenses that are working on the same projects on the same project server. Configuration C introduces the Vico license manager Vico Office module licenses are shared between multiple users. We call them floating licenses, uh, also referred to as network or multi-user licenses. Users can connect via the LAN or the WAN to check out those licenses for individual modules. Note that in collaborative deployments, the VPS and the VLM are usually on the same dedicated Vico server. Let's take a look at the requirements. One of the first things to check is your hardware. Is it powerful enough for the models that you intend to use? You can review the current system requirements page on the Vico software website. Preferably a Windows 7 64-bit machine with more than 4 gigabytes of RAM and a high-end graphics card, making sure that, and very importantly, you have the latest graphics driver installed for that graphics card. We'll also check a couple of Windows settings. We ask that your IT department adds the vicosoftware.com domain to your whitelist so that your licenses can be delivered safely. And we'll check your firewall and antivirus settings before we can run the installer and add a license. 
Let's get started. Locate the Vico Office exceptions text file in your downloads or just click here to download it. First you should request that your IT department adds vicosoftware.com to your whitelist. This is so that your machine can communicate with and receive your Vico Office licenses. Next type UAC into the Windows Start menu and open the Change User Access Control settings. We need to make sure that that's set to Never Notify so that the communication is not blocked to the project server. Now type display into the window start menu and open the display menu to make sure that the zoom factor is set to 100% and this will ensure that you see all of the Vico Office menus. Type firewall into the window start menu and open the windows firewall with advanced security. Next let's add the program and folder exceptions to your firewall and antivirus software. We'll add these to the standard Windows firewall in this demonstration. However, you might need to ask your IT department to add all of these uh, for the Vico project servers and the Vico license servers involved in your configuration. We'll now add rules for either the Versant folder or the executable files as program exceptions for in and outbound communication and then we'll add the ports again for in and outbound communication. These exceptions are not always required however without them you may experience slower performance or a complete blocking of the communication between Vico Office and your projects. Important to note that can happen even if your projects are on your local machine. Right now we're ready for installation. Make sure that you have the latest Vico Office installer from the Vico software website. And a couple of points to note during the installation. If you've already been using a previous version of the Vico Office application, you must make sure that you back up your projects either by packing them or by using the Vico project server admin tool, which is found in the Vico software folder in the start menu. You should also uninstall your existing version before installing the new version of VicoOffice. If you intend to work locally, make sure that you check both boxes to install the VicoOffice client application and the Vico project server. Remember that the process requires a restart before opening VicoOffice for the first time. And also to activate your license, you will require an internet connection to the Vico license servers, so nothing must block that communication. Let's run the Vico Office setup file. Note that decompressing and preparing that installer can take between 2 and 10 minutes depending on the speed of your machine. The first step is to choose a language, check to accept the license agreement, as we mentioned before check both the Vico Office client and the Vico project server. The design related add-ons will be included automatically. However, if you need to add some BIM design software to your machine after the Vico Office setup, you will need to rerun the Vico Office installer to include those add-ons. We have sped up this installation, but when yours gets to the end, you'll be required to restart your machine. You should have an email from licensing at vicosoftware.com or from your Vico sales contact. Copy the local user license file or files onto your desktop. Double click to run the license. Be patient, waiting for 30 seconds or so for your unique hardware ID to be processed by our license server. And you should get a license installed successfully message. However, if your computer is not connected to the internet, or something like a, a firewall is blocking your communication with the Vico license server, 
you may be presented with this message. You'll then need to save the license file manually and email it to the licensing at vicosoftware.com email address. Make sure to not include any additional attachments or text to that email. When you receive a reply, just double click on the attachment to install the license. Once your license is installed successfully, you can now start Vico Office. As a check, create a new test project by clicking on New Project, typing Test, and hitting Enter. The database tables will be created and the new project will appear in your dashboard. To check your module licenses, change the workflow panel to Cost Planner, choose the Takeoff Model Workflow item, and if you see the table in the left-hand window, your Takeoff Manager license is connected successfully. If you don't have a license, the window will appear in grey and will inform you that you have no license for that module. If your licenses are floating, uh, as I mentioned, sometimes these are called shared or network licenses, you can connect to a networked VLM, a Vico License Manager, by adding its IP address into the VLM box on the dashboard, hitting Enter to confirm closing out of Vico Office and then reopening. Your local user access will allow you to open the Vico Office application and then depending on the available modules on your networked VLM you'll be provided with access to other Vico Office modules. Let's take a look at connecting to a networked VPS. Vico Office is designed for real-time collaboration with multiple users all working on the same Vico project server. To connect to a, another networked VPS, we simply type the name or choose it from the select server box in the dashboard or we can type the IP address of that computer. After hitting enter, you'll see the list of projects from that computer refreshing in the projects list. Due to the literally millions of transactions, a wide area network connection is not supported. It needs to be a LAN connection with high bandwidth and low latency. To support remote connections, please get in touch with your Vico sales contact for more details about VAR, V -A -R, which is Vico Asynchronous Replication, or any other virtualized deployment options. A quick closing tip about adding a Schedule Planner shortcut. If you wish to use the Schedule Planner module as a standalone file-based system, you can create a Schedule Planner shortcut for easy access out of the VPS database. Browse to this folder location and drag and drop the VS control file to your start menu. This will create a shortcut to that Schedule Planner application. You should now start Schedule Planner from this shortcut, cancel out of the project settings dialog and load the global program settings for your country defaults. Be aware that using Vico Schedule Planner in this file-based mode, the scheduled data will always remain disconnected from any model data. In this video, we covered the three system components, the Vico Office Client, the Vico Project Server, and the Vico License Manager, the different configuration options for your Vico Office deployment, the hardware and software requirements prior to running the setup, and the installation process for the software and licensing. Hopefully you're set up now. We wish you the very best of luck as you start to learn this powerful, fully integrated and BIM-based virtual construction workflow. Here are some resources that will help you as you go forward. First one here is the Vico Office Structured Evaluation Process. It's a must for getting started a uh, click-by-click -click set of videos that cover the basic virtual construction workflow. The second one is to get training and certification and this covers all of the modules that Vico Office has with assignments and the certification and membership to the certified user group. And then the last one there is the Vico Office training videos which are a great quick reference following the on-site training or a run through of a whole program as a complete refresher course if you require it later on. We always love to hear how you're getting on, so please get in touch with any success stories 
as you start to deploy VicoOffice in your organization.